who is asking questions about the strange things that happened to Alice. <coughs> asked the little green man, which meant, do you know of any other people who stepped through mirrors? Oh, no. It couldn't really happen. The Alice stories are just make-believe. Wouldn't it be fabulous if we cut the big mirror behind your dressing table? Skeets led the little green man in a zoom zoom to his bedroom, where the little green man viewed himself in the mirror. <coughs> Who's coming with me, he asked. Who wants a trip into fantasy land through the mirror? The little green man pressed his fingers on the surface of the mirror. One leg went straight through, and soon his whole body was on the other side. Skeets and Zoom Zoom looked at each other and followed the little green man. They found themselves in a strange room. The furniture was rough but attractive, and all the colours were different shades of pink, with the odd touch of white. And another strange thing, there was no door. The little green man and Skeets went to the window and opened it, and the three friends were soon standing outside in a small garden which overlooked a street. Hardly had they put their feet on the ground when they heard a cry. Arrest them! Arrest them for breaking out! The Arrest person them. shouting was a policeman, Arrest them for breaking out. an odd-looking policeman. His face was quite blue, completely blue. They ran down the street in the opposite direction to the officer, who started to run after them. They ran past a high hedge, at the end of which a tubby man, who was also blue, peeped out. Here! Here! he called, and the friends ran through an open gate. When the gate closed behind them, they could no longer hear the policeman. They mopped their brows. Um, un-burglars, are you? asked the man. Un-burglars? What's an un-burglar? asked Skeets. Oh, they are people who break out of houses. Uh, uh, un-burglars, said the man. Where we come from, it's people who break into houses who get into trouble. And they are burglars, not un-burglars. Yes, but you are in the un-country now, where so many things are the opposite way round from the real world. And everyone is blue, exclaimed Skeets. Blue? snorted the tubby man. Don't be rude. We are all pink. You are the blue one. And he is yellow, he said, pointing to the little green man. Uh, and the, the fluffy one is green. <coughs> Skeets raised his eyes. He saw that everything really was different here. He noticed that the blue people could see the little green man and Zoom Zoom too. It's very insulting to be called blue when you're pink, he said. How would you like being called purple? Skeets spluttered that he really wouldn't mind, but he began to edge away. When the little green man and Zoom Zoom were watching him, Skeets jerked his head as a signal, and they began to run again, down the path and among the trees. They had not gone far, when a huge cat with a sneaky look on its face stepped out from behind a tree and beckoned them. Here, yeah, he called. Here. Yeah. He opened up the foliage for them to squeeze through. A cat, said Skeets, looking in wonderment. A talking cat. How silly of you, said the cat indignantly. Anyone could see I'm the perfectly ordinary mouse. Is there something wrong with you fellows, apart from your curious colour? Skeets looked at the little green man, who shrugged his shoulders. Is this a safe place where we won't be chased anymore, he asked. Um, Try my hole. It's over there, said the cat, indicating the entrance to a tunnel. Without waiting for further invitations, Skeets, the little green man, and Zoom Zoom darted down the tunnel as fast as they could go, followed by the cat. At the other end of the tunnel, they found themselves in a marketplace. Skeets whooped with glee when he saw a man selling hot dogs. I think I'll buy us all a hot dog, he said. You mean a hot cat, don't you? Don't bother with one for me, said the cat. I'm off if you're hot cat eaters. And with that, he ran off, leaving the three friends to make their way over to the hot dog cellar. Uh, three, um, uh, three, uh, uh, hot cats, please, said Skeets. 
passing over his money. Are you trying to get away with paying for these? demanded the man. Don't you know it's against the law to pay for anything around here? Help! Police! he cried. Skeets, the little green man in Zoom Zoom, shot off between the stalls and ran for all they were worth. Unhappily, they didn't see a sign which said, to the police station, and in no time at all, they were all locked up. Sitting in a cell, feeling sorry for himself, Skeets turned to the little green man and said, Can't you do something to help us, Greeny? The little green man grinned and quickly produced his antennae, which began to spark and crackle. He directed their rays to the bars of the window, and in no time at all, they tumbled to the ground. The three friends quickly climbed out of the window and landed straight away in the arms of a policeman. Breaking out again, I see, he said, and always running. He sat Skeets and the little green man down and released Zoom Zoom from beneath his helmet. Running, he said. Now that might be the answer. You could all run in the big race today. Uh, and if you do well, we'll set you free. The big race was to be quite a great sporting event. The policeman was there to start it, and because everyone ran round in a huge circle, he was also to judge the winners. The gun was fired, and off everyone set. Skeets was surprised that the competitors took it so easily, stopping for rests fairly often. He and the little green man with Zoom Zoom right behind soon opened up a big lead. It seemed no time at all for the three friends were fighting it out between them who was to cross the winning line first. And, as it happened, they all crossed together. Dear me, said the policeman, you don't seem to have the sense you were born with. I gave you the chance to do well and to have your freedom, and you completely waste it. What do you mean? Skeets asked. We all crossed the winning line together, miles ahead of the others. You don't seem very bright, said the policeman. The people who win our races are the people who come in last. It's an unrace, you see. So you did worst of all. Pity. Come on, yelled Skeets to the little green man in Zoom Zoom. Let's get out of here. And they dashed off before the policeman or anyone else realised what they were doing. They ran as fast as their legs could carry them to the marketplace, through the tunnel, across the glade, and back to the pink room. The policemen with a crowd of helpers were on their heels, and they pulled at Skeets as the little green man and Zoom Zoom pushed through the mirror to safety. Poor Skeets was being carried away, struggling by two burly men, as he woke to find that he was in his bed, struggling away with the little green man beside him, trying to calm him down. Gosh, so, it was only a dream, Greeny, grinned Skeets. It was a bit of a nightmare, really. And he told the little green man and Zoom Zoom all about it. The little green man looked just a bit cross. You mean they nearly got the better of us, he said. Just you wait, I'll show them. He climbed up onto the dressing table and looked in the mirror. It's no good, Greeny. It was all a dream. You can't really go through the looking glass. But the little green man was pushing through the glass and he completely disappeared. Skeets and Zoom Zoom looked at each other as they heard a fearful din coming from the other side of the mirror. And they were both relieved when the little green man quickly popped back. Though... He was a very tattered little green man indeed. He said, Well, really. Skeets had taken the little green man and Zoom Zoom to look around Blackbridge Castle, but to their dismay, the notice said there would be no guided tours today. The man at the door said he was very sorry, but there was nothing he could do about it. Of course, you could always look around on your own, if you kept out of trouble, he said. Skeets thanked him very much, and watched by the beaming doorkeeper, he made off across the courtyard of the castle. Scampering after him came the little green man and Zoom Zoom, though the doorkeeper could only see Skeets, as the little green man and Zoom Zoom were quite invisible to everyone except Skeets. And you and me, of course. 
Entering the castle, Skeets and his friends climbed the main staircase to be confronted by a row of suits of armor. Said the little green man, which meant, these are very strange spacesuits. Uh, spacesuits? laughed Skeets. They're not spacesuits. They were used hundreds of years ago as protection from lances, arrows, and swords. Said the little green man, which meant, You seem to know a lot about this place. Have you been here before? Uh, many times, said Skeets. I could give you the guided tour myself. Are there some parts of the castle you've never seen before? asked the little green man. It'd be fun to explore them now, and I can see the guided tour parts another time. Good idea, exclaimed Skeets. There are lots of places the guide doesn't let us see. Up the tower, for instance. Come on. They soon found themselves in a dark room high up in the tower, full of interesting old weapons. Guns, spears, swords, lances, and bows and arrows. At the other end of the room, a door stood ajar, and a curious noise could be heard from one of the rooms beyond it. Ah, well. <laughs> Did you hear that? asked Keats. Both the little green man and Zoom Zoom nodded. Somebody sounds very unhappy, said the little green man. They found the room the noise was coming from and pulled the door gently open so that they could see inside. But it made an incredibly loud creaking noise. When the friends looked at first, they saw no one, but as they stared, a trembling man popped up from behind the city. Uh, uh, who are you? He asked, his voice quivering. Oh, just a visitor, replied Skeets. Who are you? Me? Oh, I'm the Duke. I own this place. I was frightened to death when I heard you. I thought you were someone coming to throw me out. The Duke produced his handkerchief. <laughs> oh, to think of this lovely old castle becoming a ruin. Oh, isn't it sad? But why are you being thrown out? asked Skeets. Have you done something wrong? The little green man looked from Skeets to the Duke to hear the answer. Oh, uh, no, 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 nothing like that, said the Duke. I simply can't afford to keep the place going any longer. And they'll come and close everything down at any time, I'm sure. The Duke sighed, just giving time for Skeets to catch sight of the puzzled look on the face of the little green man. I've tried guided tours and that sort of thing. But the money people pay isn't enough, so the old place will just have to go, I suppose. Said the little green man to Skeets, though the Duke could not hear, of course. He'd gone over to the window and was looking across the courtyard, which gave Skeets time to finish his conversation with the little green man. When he'd finished, he ran across to the Duke and cried, Oh, don't give up, Duke. I can find lots of help for you. Next week is a holiday week. Why not have a week-long carnival with competitions and games and sideshows, eh? Let's have dungeon discos and, and someone can make tea and buns and jam and, and my Uncle Jim will organise a fishing competition in the moat. The Duke beamed. Uh, do you think it would work? He asked. Oh, I'm sure it would, cried Skeets, and he danced round and round with the delighted Duke. Skeets enlisted the help of two of his friends, and between them they found a great deal of help in the shape of mothers and fathers, aunts and uncles, and many, many friends. Notices went out everywhere, and soon everyone in the area was talking about the holiday week fair to be held at the castle. Skeets and the little green man and Zoom Zoom found lots of jobs to do, the most exciting of which was erecting the huge marquees. Uh -huh. 